The following podcast may contain adult language and an abundance of salt. So get ready, nerds, because we're talking the new Bruce Willis movie, Breach. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Salty Nerd Podcast and thank you for joining us. Uh, today's episode we're going to be talking about the new Bruce Willis movie Breach and I am joined as always by my illustrious co-host started with Matt Vader 74. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the show sir. What's up my friend? How you doing? Are you worthy today? No I, I am, am worthy. You are. <laughs> I, I don't have an old Mjolnir here but, <laughs> but he's around somewhere. You're looking good man. I'm feeling more metal than Thor but you know Thor's pretty metal. Thor's pretty metal. I like it. All right, I'm also joined by the ambassador of estrogen, Jude. I'm not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, producer of the show, Matthew Kadish. Greetings and salutations. Hello. And, and my apologies for making <laughs> you guys watch this movie. Right? <laughs> yeah, dude, you're banned. <laughs> Truth. Are you going to cancel me? I, 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 did you see my, my, my text? Yeah. I was like, Kadish is no longer allowed yeah. to pick movies. We're, the three of us are going to start suggesting movies now. <laughs> Truthfully, I only watched half of it. <gasps> you gave up? Oh, my God. I fell asleep. Sorry. <laughs> Whereas I feel I, really I, cheated I right had now. to watch it twice to make up for her. <laughs> I watched it twice, too. I only needed to watch it once. I was like, it's, uh, it was another one of those Monster Hunter things where I was like, it can't be that bad. All right, guys. Real quick, before we dive into this movie, a quick word from our sponsors. Welcome back. All right, let's dive into this. Who has the synopsis? Jude, do you, are you? I can just read you what's on IMDb because I didn't write one. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it how she does this now. It's just like, if I don't like this movie, I'm, I'm, not, just, I'm IMDb in it. Zero I'm, effort. I'm really I get sorry. It. I love it. I'm really I love sorry. It. <laughs> okay, 2020, Breach, rated R, with a runtime of one hour, 32 minutes. On the cusp of fatherhood, a junior mechanic aboard an interstellar arc to New Earth must outwit a malevolent cosmic terror intent on using the spaceship as a weapon. That's it? Yes. That's <laughs> okay. all IMDB wanted Kadish, to put into it. Do you want to, uh, do you, want to you know, expand? <laughs> um, so the, the father, who stows away on the ship because he knocked up the admiral's daughter. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's very... Uh... Original. Yeah. <laughs> so like the Admiral gets his daughter on the ship and the baby daddy sneaks on board and poses as a janitor. And he becomes friends with Bruce Willis's character, who's also a janitor, but was a, a war hero previously, a disgraced war hero. And they spend half the movie cleaning bathrooms. And making moonshine. And making moonshine. Out of jet fuel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> then... Um, a alien starts attacking people and taking over their bodies, and then they fight that alien poorly. And this was this was so many like tropes. Of, that's all it was was tropes. It's all it was. What yeah. do you think it made? <sighs> the six ninety nine that I spent renting it. I don't know. Well, actually, no. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Uh, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I, I don't even know how to I judge these movies on box office because they either. don't go to the movie theaters. I know. Do they? It's tough. Um, okay, so it's opening weekend. It opened in New Zealand. It made $1,000. Oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> according to IMDb, worldwide gross is 39000 That's Wow. Awful. How much did it cost to make? I don't have that. Yeah, it's Probably not much. $12. We, 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 we couldn't find the budget for this, but I'm guessing anywhere between 10 and $30 million. million dollars for this? Yeah. I but, don't know how... They're recouping the money that they're spending making these shitty movies. For, like, what for, is the point? Foreign distribution rights and streaming rights. Those are the things that they're pre-selling to make back their money. Like, So this was a, uh, a movie made by 308 Entertainment. And they've done like five of these kind of B sci-fi movies with Bruce Willis so far. And then they've been selling them to Saban Films. Mm -hmm. And Saban Films has been distributing them to streaming and stuff like that. This is one of those things that makes me think... It like just kind of reiterates my belief that nothing is real. We're all in the <laughs> matrix. Money isn't real because it costs more to make this than it's ever going to recoup. Yeah. But they keep doing this and it's like they're flaunting in our faces. Y'all are in the matrix. Nothing is real. Uh, and we're all just like, yeah, okay, you, you kind of have to understand um, how <laughs> film distribution works. Like these movies are probably making money. They're probably making a profit. Like for instance, this film was released theatrically in Russia. And in its opening weekend, it grossed $25,000 in 224 theaters, ranking it the ninth 
in the top 10 of Russian box office movies. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, but they're getting it out in theaters so that they can um, do like DVD releases and stuff like that I to mean, help recoup their I don't. Even, I don't even feel like this thing is like good enough to be a cult status film. No, it's 10 not. years down the it's road. Not. Can yeah. we talk about Bruce I, Willis for I, a second? Yeah, in a second. Okay. I just want, I just wanted to say, <laughs> I feel like they filmed this thing. Like, like if you like took a camera down to the, one of the local laser zapper fighter laser places, tag. laser tag places and use the, the, the inside of one of those places. I think everything this, takes, everything in this movie takes place in like two locations. It's, it's awful. The hallway. I'll, I'll, I'll say this, like the set design looks so cheap. And this movie looked like it was shot on an iPhone, and it looked like it used mm -hmm. one of those iPhone apps for all the special effects. Yes. So, like, the special effects in this movie were embarrassingly bad. Yeah. I think they used the same medical building from Creepazoids <laughs> for this movie. <laughs> there's a as scene. The set. There's they a, just reset it. Yeah. They were like, throw some chairs in there. Now it's an office. The, there's a um, there's a scene at the end when they were getting into the escape pod, and the, the sliding door goes up and down for the <laughs> escape pod that they crawl into. And it was like... You could tell it was just moving. It was like a piece of cardboard, and it was just flopping around in the wind. And then when it closed, it and, just and like... And the guy who was in charge of closing it wasn't paying attention. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, you're up. Oh, shit. <laughs> this... I had one job. <laughs> like like the reactor core for the ship. It looks like one of those oh. like strobe lights you get at yeah. Ikea. Yeah. To like... get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. And and <sighs> the dialogue... It's awful. ...is horrendous. <laughs> like, it doesn't even make sense. People say things, and you're like, what are you talking about? And then they just start asking questions over and over and over again. Like that's the dialogue is like 90% of people going, what are we doing? Where are we going? Who is that? What are we going to say? I what are we going to do? Like, it's just, it's so crazy yeah. bad. I would have kind of liked to know how much money Bruce Willis makes for making. Okay. This, that's a perfect segue. Different. We need to talk about Bruce Willis. What the hell is going on with that guy? Yeah. What happened? He's freaking diehard, he's, dude. He's he's uh, he's John McClane. I don't believe that's actually Bruce Willis. <laughs> you think it's a body snatcher? I think, I think he's a pod person, <laughs> and we need to find the real Bruce Willis. Is he hiding? He's somewhere? not okay. Something. What is going on? Like, when did this happen? I don't. Know. I know. Like, he's he's been like giving less and less of a shit through the like, end of his career. I was like, I don't remember any news stories coming out where he owes the IRS billions of that's dollars. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't feel like he like owes you know Demi Moore a ton of child support. Like why? Why does he like just? That? I if, don't. I don't get it. If he just doesn't care this much, why not just retire? This is the Sixth Sense guy. This is Die Hard. This is yeah. You know, Bruce Willis is a good actor. Yeah, he's a beloved actor. We all love Bruce Willis. He's one of the most popular action stars ever. Why is he doing this? I don't. I don't, the I don't, face I don't get of it. Seagram's golden wine rollers. <laughs> Like most I, other I, I actors, understand. when they kind of get tired of the game, they move on to make, they make their own alcohol and they go off and like, and do, you know, like Samuel L. Jackson was doing Capital One for a while. Yeah. Probably well, got a fat deal from he that. Got, he got paid a lot, probably. <sighs> and he's still at the height of his popularity. Sam Jackson's never going to be unpopular. Yeah. Where's but, uh, my super suit? <laughs> you know, he, I mean, he's not even like Nick Cage. Nick Cage is just weird. <laughs> yeah, that's. You, you, you know. Nick Cage is at least quirky, and when yeah. he does projects, you're kind of like, I want to see how weird this is. It's like this is just garbage. Yeah, but it's see, just it's so bad. It was so relaxing; it lulled me into a sleep. This is a that's a good example because we just watched uh, what was it, Jiu Jitsu yeah. with Nicolas Cage? Yeah, horrendous movie. Yeah. Horrendous, but but, but we all like, we oh. all wanted to watch it. Yeah, we're like, he, oh, it's Nick Cage, he, but he was in it for four minutes. Yeah, uh -huh. and Willy's Wonderland, super weird movie, but awesome. awesome. Well, we had a good time with that. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I just don't. I'm really confused as to what's going on well, with uh, Bruce so you Willis. Know, Bruce Willis ruined his career once before in the early '90s, culminating with like Hudson Hawk, where basically, uh, you know, he he was at the top of his game with Die Hard, and then he made a bunch of bad movie choices because he's a lazy actor. And it wasn't until Quentin Tarantino kind of picked him out of the gutter and dusted him off that he had a career resurgence, where he had a good run for uh, you know about a decade, I'd mm. say. And, you know, he was still doing these, like, lazy actor things. In fact, uh, Kevin Smith almost quit. Oh, what was it, beat. Cop Out? Yeah, 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 because of his experience working with... Uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> work, work, I never work. actually watched that one. Me either. Yeah, uh, it's terrible. But, mm -hmm. uh, but he, he basically quit, uh, almost quit filmmaking because of his ex experience working with Bruce Willis on Cop Out. And uh, the... Uh, 
you know, basically Bruce Willis has gotten to a point in his career. I think there was an issue with the Expendables 2 where he wanted like a million dollars a day to like show up and do like Expendables 2 and Sylvester Stallone was like, go take a hike. <laughs> hey, uh, you're not worth that much money. <laughs> and and Bruce, Bruce Willis, like, like he's at the point where he's just like, he doesn't care. Like he'll, he'll phone in his, uh, his oh my gosh. Uh, performances. And a lot of you say like, why is he doing these like kind of chintzy low budget movies? And it's because he gets paid a lot of money and he'll show up for like a day or two. Yeah, well, you uh, can tell. To, yeah, to just like to say a couple lines and they can say that Bruce Willis is in the movie. Oh. He was actually in this a lot more than I was expecting him to be. I I did think it took him a while for him to show up. If he's like billed as the main character, he was. It took him twenty minutes before we saw him. Yeah, they had to set think, up the opening because yeah. the main character is the kid, the janitor, kid. the janitor Tip kid, technically. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. And uh, yeah, but no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. It was just. It was funny to me because. Um, it's very obvious when they use a stunt double for Bruce Willis. <laughs> and it was like, I was watching it and there's a lot of like a lot of action scenes with like zombies jumping off the walls and stuff like that. There's a lot going on in this movie. And you can tell like there was this one scene <laughs> where the zombies were attacking the, the small group of janitors and, and mechanics. And there's like maybe four or five of them versus a whole bunch of zombies. And they, the, the other people, the three or four characters were getting like, pounced on and dragged around and fighting and they were like kicking all these zombies butts and bruce willis every time they cut to bruce willis he was just standing there with his gun yeah just no <laughs> reaction whatsoever just going like oh shit that, that must thought, be rough guys what was <laughs> I, I think my favorite scene in this movie and it's, it's it's an awful scene is when they're all like toward the end when they're all like stuck in the room mm -hmm. and all the, the zombie horde is you know pounding on the walls and the ball and the walls are bashing in yeah and then they so they decide to wake up the, the soldier regiment, right? That that's that's on the that's sleeping on the in the ship. Yeah. And then they revive them all, and instantly they're all up and geared and got their weapons and everything, <laughs> and they're getting the pep talk from the from the admiral. And it looks like they just got the extras from the trucks out back. It's like, <laughs> hey, you guys want to be in this movie? <laughs> they, and they're all like, yeah, all right. So it's, like, and it's just awful. They they're legit just, put them in they like, look, they look terrible in paintball gear. And then they, then they all start going towards the battle and there's like six zombies and they're all, you know, yeah. it's just, it's horrible. It's it's so just, it's and, like, and, and it's funny. Cause like it, it, in the, in the movie, Bruce Willis's character is supposed to be like this drunk. He makes like moonshine. I, I really do think that Bruce Willis was just drunk <laughs> throughout, I, I throughout think the so. making of this movie. Because I, I mean, like he just acts like, like, he, like he's barely conscious as he's like reciting his lines. You know? Yeah. Um, but it, it's surprising because like this movie does have a really good cast of actors. Yeah. That, like like the, the, you see a lot of character actors, um, like Timothy V. Murphy, who mm -hmm. play, plays like the the main um, security head guy. Mm -hmm. that, that's kind of Bruce Willis's foil in this movie. He doesn't have a lot to do, but he's like a really fantastic character actor. And uh, you you also have um, the guy from Batman versus Superman, Callan Mulvey. Yep, uh, he's in this. You know, um, so like you, you see like a lot of recognizable actors in, in this movie, and you'd think it'd be good. It's just not good. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's it's really bad. It's, it's probably one of the worst movies we've done for this podcast. It's 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 definitely one. It's, it's not you know with uh, the least amount of effort put into it. I've seen worse. I think I mean, Creepazoids was worse. I I wasn't there. How that dare week. you? I think Creepazoids was worse than this. <laughs> I was thankfully. If gone. I had a choice between killing myself, watching Creepazoids, <laughs> or watching Breach, <laughs> I'd pick Breach. <laughs> well, what, what's funny? This movie was directed by a guy named John Suits, and he's the same guy who directed the Die Hard battery commercial that oh my God. showed up in. <laughs> and it's funny because like in in some of the the set. Like like the hallway scene, for instance, like we're watching it right here on th those things in the background. They're like apple crates that they like repurposed yeah. <laughs> for like, yeah. like like a super science fiction-y type thing. Like everything in this movie just seems so cheap to me. Yeah. You know, it's weird uh, though. Even it's... like the cinematography, like yeah. you can always tell when you have cheap cinematography, when they go like monochrome and post where there are these scenes where it's just like one color. And like, it's such a cheap like, like they used to do it with filters like day, mm -hmm. day for night where they put like a blue filter on, on the camera. So like they'd shoot out in sunlight, but it would look like I, nighttime. Yeah. I got a kind of a fan film kind of vibe off of this. I can't even and, say and, that. And some of, you know, a bad fan film. Yeah. Yeah. Because there, um, what was it? Cause, cause this is, feels very much like an aliens ripoff as well. Oh, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a poor man's alien. Oh, yeah. 100%. And it's uh, with, for the 40th anniversary of alien, there was like a fan film competition. And I was totally in for that because I love that franchise. And I jumped in on the fan film thing and I was watching all the ones that were submitted 
as like their top fan films. They were legit good stuff. And this was done mm -hmm. with like a shoestring budget, no major actors in it whatsoever. And they made awesome freaking little short 15, 20 minute movies. Because yeah. they cared. Because they cared. <laughs> this is awful. And I'm sure at some point in time, these fan films, they do stuff like that. They use apple crates and they just glue them together and they put like a, a weird sci-fi spray paint on them. And they, because they work the camera a certain angle, it looks legit. But this, they just... Yeah, but like, like even like the intercom system on the ship, it, it looks like the 1980s like <laughs> intercoms you'd get in your home. Yeah. Like they just found a bunch of those at like a thrift store and like put them... On, <laughs> Painted them yeah. silver. <laughs> so, something like that. Like, like the level of... of cheapness that it looked like went into the set design and even like the so the visual effects on, on this um i actually looked up uh it was done by aldea vfx and it seems like it's like one guy mm -hmm. and uh, his name is daniel calvo he's the vfx supervisor on on this movie and like when when they shoot the guns they're not actually shooting guns so like you Just have like yeah you have like these like animated muzzle flashes mm -hmm. And I've seen YouTubers with like prosumer equipment do better special effects yep. than what I saw in this movie because typically you want to have like layers to those mm -hmm. muzzle flashes where it's it's like hotter at the the center and then like you have like a little bit of color and a little bit of variety in terms of like how the the flash goes just to make it look more realistic. This one it was li literally like white 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 yeah. white like like it looked terrible. I, yeah. I liked I really liked the. Uh, the holographic Bruce Willis head that oh, kept dude. following the janitor guy around as well. <laughs> it was so funny. There was there was moments where there, he's like, turn left, now turn right, now stop right there. <laughs> and then they cut to the actual Bruce Willis character, and he's like having a completely different conversation with somebody else mm -hmm. while he's still giving direct. It's like, doesn't make any sense. They obviously just got Bruce yeah. Willis to sit down in a chair and say a bunch of random lines, and then they just pasted it where yeah, they needed so, it. So like the setup for this movie is that there's a plague on Earth. And it's it's wiping out the human population, and so they've been sending um, like colony ships to this place called New Earth. And uh, this movie starts with like the very last colony ship getting ready to take off, and so everyone's trying to get on board the ship. And uh, we start off following this pregnant girl with her her boyfriend. They're trying to get on the ship, and so eventually the ship takes off, and it's got like three hundred thousand people in cryostasis that they're going to be delivering to new earth. And they are the last survivors of earth because after they leave, they go into hyperspace and because of the time dilation, um, 30 years have passed on earth and pr pretty much everyone has succumbed to this plague. So these are the last survivors of earth and they're trying to make their way to new earth. And while I'm watching this, so like the, the hyperspace jump takes like, I don't know, maybe like a minute of screen mm -hmm. time as it, as the crew that's still awake is kind of going through this thing. And then they come out of it and they have a, like a eight week journey or like 80 a, days, 80, 80 day journey yeah. to get to new earth. And I'm sitting there watching this. I'm like, why couldn't they just have hyper jumped the whole way all the way to new yeah. earth? Cause they do at the end, like the alien like hijacks the, I thought the ship exact same thing. and they, the way that the alien makes the ship go faster is he just like feeds people into the hyperdrive. He, he starts overloading the reactor and, and the surge in energy in the reactor makes the ship goes go faster. Yeah. And they're, they're trying to basically crash into new earth so that they can then spread their alienness, I guess. <laughs> like, like, like it, it, it's, Man, this sounds awesome. I'm really upset that I didn't finish the movie. <laughs> it, it's never truly explained how the alien like where the alien came from or how, well, how, how they, like, I know how they got it on the ship, but like where oh, okay. the guy who got it on the ship got yeah. it from, you know, like, like he he was saying, like when they found out who it was, he was saying like, I thought that it would kill us all really quickly. I didn't know any of this was going to happen. It's, it's like, it's like a little leech. What did you expect was going to happen? <laughs> you know? It was weird, man. Cause that guy, like there's like this weird little subplot where like the rebellion is the ones trying to stop people from going to a different planet. Cause they feel like, humanity is like a yeah yeah a basically there's a virus. Sect, sect of humanity that feels like humanity had its chance and it effed everything up and it needs to be wiped out yeah and so like one of these people got on this ship and is trying to kill everyone and what's crazy is the climax of the movie is like bruce willis in order to save the day kills everyone <laughs> all three hundred thousand. All three hundred thousand people yeah <laughs> but they were they were the last ship of like 30. yeah yeah. So Earth. supposedly, as far as they know, this new Earth place is already colonized yeah. and it's like a paradise and all that stuff. But that gets subverted later on, too. But yeah, Bruce Willis, 
like he a lot of the other people like you were talking about a lot of character actors and stuff like there's some people in this movie that took their role seriously. Uh, who's the guy who played Punisher, the first Punisher? Thomas, Thomas Jane. Jane. Thomas Jane. He's he's he like did the not admiral. Take this he was the admiral. <laughs> but no, I love none, I, none of these guys. Took no, but I seriously. love the his. Only, I think the only person who took their acting job seriously was, was like that Noah yeah. guy, the, the janitor. janitor. Guy. I yeah. feel like like the the interactions in the movie was actually true to life because he was like, "This is this is my my he, movie. I'm in a movie. This with, is my project." And everybody yeah. else was like. Pipe down, kid. Yeah, he's like, I'm in a this movie a with paycheck. Bruce Willis. Yeah. Like, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, he's acting, yeah. and everybody else is just, like, laughing. How would you like back. to be an actor in Hollywood? It's like, yeah, man, I was in a movie with Bruce Willis. Really? Which one? Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> Breach. No, but, but the uh, the Admiral guy, I, he committed to this, like, goofy, over-the-top Southern Admiral with, like, the stogie. He had a he had an electronic cigar. It had, like, a weird, he was vaping with the giant no, like, cigar. Like, like, seriously, Thomas Jane is following the, the I don't give a crap Bruce Willis playbook. Uh, like, he was in Money, Money Plane before yeah. this, and... Like, oh man, money plane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like Thomas Jane, he's one of those guys, like he can be a really good actor when he's given the right, you know, property yeah. and, and the right direction. But when he's kind of left to his own devices like he is in this movie, he's so over the top. <laughs> I think he was on set for like maybe like two days yeah. because, because like basically he shows up, he gives a speech, then he's missing for half the movie because he's in cryo. Right. And then like he comes out at the end and, and instantly dies. Yeah. So like it, it felt like he just showed up. He's like, oh, I'm getting paid how much for two days of work? Okay. Yeah. He did uh, give this during pep talk. He was <laughs> truck driver soldiers. <laughs> and, and, so. and, and he's like wearing sunglasses on a spaceship yes. out in space. Oh, God, I love it. See, this is the cheesiness that I want. Like if he was like the benchmark for all the other actors, sorry, the, all the other actors in the movie, and they went almost for like a more cheesy comedic feel. But they didn't I think this movie. Though. No, they played it completely straight. And it yeah, kills except it. Except for Thomas Bruce. Jane. Like, except, he's the only yeah. one who knew what movie he was in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, if everybody was on his level, I think this movie would have been really funny. And, and there's a scene. So, like, the, he's because he's the captain of the ship, even though he's in cryo for some reason. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no yeah, yeah, like, why, why is the crew in cryo for, like, a 80-day journey? He's, um, he's the admiral, and his, like, soldier crew are, like, the the main people but all right, then all you janitors are in charge i'm gonna go take a nap <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. they're like okay for the 80 days you guys are just going to maintain the ship and then when we get there we'll wake up yeah so yeah. so basically you, you know he so he goes into cryo and when he comes out uh he's in the middle of this crisis and he doesn't even blink an eye and he leads his soldiers against you know, this he's army like, of zombies. Same shit, different, different day. day. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, he's got his sunglasses on. I so, just like, want to take a nap. Yeah. yeah. So, so, like in his last stand, and the the aliens are trying to get him because he's the only one who has access to the reactor. Um, so, in order to prevent the aliens from winning, he decides to blow himself up and take all the aliens with him. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the his last words to Noah. Are, are like you know like you know take care of my daughter t t tell her i love her yeah and and the way that thomas jane delivers the line <laughs> he, 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 you could tell like he was like almost reading it off of a cue card <laughs> you know hey kid you tell Haley i think she'll be all right i mean that that's what it felt like and was he a, still wearing the sunglasses yes. and and no. his lines were inside <laughs> that would have been great but what's funny is there's a scene where bruce willis is laying on the cot um, after they lock him in the room because they suspect him for something. And I swear to God, you can see an earpiece in his ear. <laughs> Probably. Where, 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 you know, I don't think Bruce Willis memorized any of his lines for oh, this. I, doubt I think it. people just fed him his lines. Come as out to the coast. Along. We'll get together. <laughs> <laughs> Have some beers. Make a movie. No, but I think my favorite scene is with the Admiral and, and this, the main character, Noah, where, when he meets him for the first time and he's got the sunglasses and he's got an electronic cigar, uh, you know, the vape thing, and he goes, so you're the dead man walking. And I'm like, there's, there's, oh, this there's, is genius. I thought they were going to go that direction for the whole movie. And they, it just didn't. I was so excited to see him play this over the top, like listen, Southern freaking There's no Admiral best guy. scene in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Quit trying I, to say, oh, my favorite scene. No, but I was. There's no favorite scene, man. I had this movie a, is dog shit. I had a little okay. bit of hope early on. I need you to reword that to the one scene I didn't hate. Okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> You can't have a favorite scene. You guys want to talk about the uh, the Stranger Things monster just, at the end? I just want to quit talking about this movie. <laughs> I, I, I didn't see it. I was asleep. Oh, Stranger right. Things was a billion times better. I know. No, I'm not just saying, but the, like the design of the monster itself, it was just like a giant mouth with like four so legs. The, 
the two survivors get to New Earth. Is that what it's called, New Earth? Oh, 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 New oh, Earth. Hold on, before we get to that, <laughs> oh, I, got, I, I, I just want to point out <laughs> that they kill the monsters in this movie with cleaning supplies. Yes. Oh, that's right, Clorox. Oh, yeah, the acid. This was this was oh. like, like, like there's basically an industrial strength cleaner that is basically like acid. Yeah, and this is the only thing that kills the aliens. <laughs> it's brutal. But it's funny though because it's in like a normal little like plastic bottle, but then he spills some on it and it melts through like a metal cabinet, and he's yeah. like, "Oops!" I'm like, and then they find out that they put that stuff in their moonshine to spice it up. I'm like, this. They just went. Yeah, but it's way like up. one drop per gallon of water. Type <laughs> it's thing. So silly. But yeah, they they hook this stuff up to their flamethrowers, and that's like the the flame the, the only thing. Ugh. God, the flamethrowers. This was the um the cell phone CGI that we were talking about. The freaking flamethrowers because all cell phone you, CGI is better. You I can tell this is like they just flash a blue light in front of all the actors, and they're like, "Okay, guys, act like there's flames coming out <laughs> of your gun." And, and where where did that crazy big alien thing come from? Okay, so what happened is after the admiral blew himself up, he blew up all the other zombies around. And then all the body parts that were left over started like coming yeah, together into a together. And, and congealed uh, okay. into a giant like amalgamation but, of but, all but the different then, people. Like when Noah sets the thing on fire, it turns back into a human body. Yeah, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> didn't make any sense. No, it doesn't at all. make any sense at all. No sense. Uh, no. Anyway, so you want to talk about the ending? Uh, are we almost there? Yeah, we're there. So they get to the planet, the two survivors, New and every, and and it's like watching. Um, that stupid movie we watched a long time ago where everything was red. Yeah. Except now everything's blue. <laughs> oh, the angry red planet. Angry red planet. Except yeah. now it's the angry blue planet. Yeah. And so, literally you can't see anything. You just put a blue filter over a, well, over a camera. It, and it's it, like wasn't, it wasn't even a filter. It was a post-production yeah. monochrome. It's like, it's like they went down effect. to Sunset Park. Yep. Walked along the, the walkway. Said, okay, guys, there's a, there's some, there's some, there was a monster over there. Just act scared. Yeah. And then that was. Oh my God. Movie. No. Yeah. But the ending horrible. line, the ending line was freaking genius. So, the the girl who's pregnant and Noah, the main character, mm -hmm. they finally arrive there. They're sitting there and they're like looking and they're expecting this to be like the humanity utopia that they yeah. were always told about. And it turns out that the alien that they had just destroyed has already landed on this planet. Mm -hmm. And there's like this giant like Stranger Things style this monster in the background. Mountain. It was actually a Cloverfield ending. Yeah. 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 And the, the, the last line of the movie, the guy picks up his flamethrower and he goes, burn them all. Yeah, and it was like. You have one flamethrower, and there's a monster the size of a mountain right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's this ginormous monster in in the, you know, far, in the far, far in the distance that's like swatting away like fighter jets. <laughs> and there's this one kid who's infected, and it's running full speed at at his pregnant wife, and it's taking a really long time for this full speed zombie <laughs> yeah. to get to her. And uh, ba basically, it, like th this movie, it, it was such a weird like thing to end it on be, because like it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. You, you saw the twist coming the minute you saw that yeah. kid staring off in the distance. And there's like a lot of weird things in this movie. Like for instance, the guy who gets the pregnant daughter onto the ship, um, the Admiral had promised him his own ship if he were to do this for him. Oh, yeah. But it's like, you're already on the ship to new mm -hmm. earth. It's not like star Wars where you have like, you know, <laughs> your own private spaceship. You're going to go gallivanting around the galaxy. And this guy, he basically steals an escape pod. Uh, as like that's going to be his ship <laughs> and he escapes but then there was like a zombie on the escape pod and it like ended up eating him as he like flew off in, into nothingness yeah it was it was oh. so weird like like there's so many like weird random stuff like that in this movie this is it, it seems like it was just put together by somebody who's like oh this is really cool from that movie let's make a cheaper version of that, that how wanted. about we not make any more i'm down all <laughs> right so let's give this thing are we all on the same page um, here Big old yeah. So so basically, the guys who wrote this movie, they've written all five of like Bruce Willis's three hundred eight entertainment. Is that films. the Cosmic Sin? Yeah. Well, one they, too? they yeah. need they need to pick a new profession. Oh my god. Because they're dog shit. <laughs> you, you, you know what my score of this movie is? Um, this movie gave me diarrhea when I was done watching it. It, it literally gave me diarrhea. Is that a joke? It's not even. It could be. It is a joke, but it's true. It's true. It's true. I watched this movie, and two minutes later, my bowels went, <laughs> and they twisted up. And it was over. Oh my god! It's like I'm never watching. What a piece of shit! So, are oh. we doing that? It, it, don't watch that it. For it'll, everybody, it'll, it'll give you diarrhea. It's terrible. It, it's awful. It's, it's so sad. It's it made me. It made me angry at Bruce Willis. I was mad at him for being in this movie. Yeah. And ironically, like this is the most I've seen Bruce Willis try. <laughs> he in, did in, in yeah. many different movies. I wanted to mention that this actually looks like better than that Cosmic Sin 
movie that we watched the trailer for. Yeah. I mean, he's he's sleep. He's asleep through that <laughs> whole thing. This actually looked like he was doing something. So I feel like the next one's going to be even worse. Yeah, like the and I don't want to watch it. <laughs> the writers of this movie did Cosmic Sin. They also did a movie called Reactor where basically Bruce Willis, uh, it's like Die Hard Reverse where Bruce Willis is Hans Gruber where he take, he leads a team to take over a nuclear just reactor stop. and there's another guy who just, has to take them out. Stop. Just stop. Just <laughs> stop. This is 308 Entertainment. Oh my God. Well, well, they need to go out of business. It's so bad. It's so I'm, I'm done talking about. Yeah, I'm done now. too. Um, yeah, down two thumbs down for me. Vader's diarrhea. Okay, Jude nap. Okay, Kadish. Don't even bother. Okay. All right, guys, that's it for our review. We, we watched it, so you wouldn't have <laughs> exactly. To. You're that's, welcome. That's our review of Breach. You owe me money for my time. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe on the YouTube channel so you guys can check out our other content. We'll re we review better movies, I promise. Send us money, too, because <laughs> we keep spending our money watching these <laughs> shitty movies so that you don't have to. It's basically Awful. a protection fee. Just if, send us a dollar. <laughs> if you guys would like to support the podcast, go to Salty Nerd Store. I'm sorry, SaltyNerdClub.com. That takes you to our Patreon page. If you want to buy some merch, go to SaltyNerdStore.com. That will take you to our T public account. All right, guys, let's get out of here. Uh, Vader, where can they find you? on the socials they can find me at matt vader 74 on uh 74th there you and, go. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, on uh, twitter instagram and youtube right on. Yeah. i think you found your new uh tag buddy uh jude where can they find you at you can find me at i am jude juju on instagram and twitter you can find me at my website thevoiceofjude.com and you can find me uh on my only fans the bulletproof package <laughs> it's really batman it's batman he's, he's <laughs> behind me um okay uh matthew kadish where can they find you at uh, you can find me at Matthew Kadish, K-A-D-I-S-H on Twitter and KadishBooks.com if you want to check out my Amazon page. Right on. And I'm your host, Salty Nerd. You can catch me on Twitter at Salty underscore nerd. Stay salty, my friends. Mm -hmm.